Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namane Namaste Sarasati Devi Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Pachacharine Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya 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 Narayanam Namaskrityam Narayanam Namaskrityam Naram Chaiva Narotamam Naram Chaiva Narotamam Daivim Sarasatim Vyasam Daivim Sarasatim Vyasam Tato Jaya Mudiraya Tato Jaya Mudiraya Nasta Praeshu Vabhadreshu Nasta Praeshu Vabhadreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Shloke Bhagavati Uttama Shloke Bhaktir Bhavati Naishtaki Bhaktir Bhavati Naishtaki So we're reading Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter Number 2 13, entitled Dhritarashtra Quits Home, text number 10. Bhavadvida Bhagavatas, Bhavadvida Bhagavatas, Tirta Bhuta Swayam Vipo, Tirta Bhuta Swayam Vipo, Tirti Kurvanti Tirtani, Tirti Kurvanti Tirtani, Svantaste Nagada Prata, Svantaste Nagada Prata, Bhavadvida Bhagavatas, Bhavadvida Bhagavatas, Tirta Bhuta Tirta Bhuta Swayam Vipo Tirta Bhuta Swayam Vipo Tirti Kurvanti Tirtani Tirti Kurvanti Tirtani Svantaste Nagada Prata Svantaste Nagada Prata Bhavadvida Bhagavatas Bhavadvida Bhagavatas Tirta Bhuta Swayam Vipo Tirta Bhuta Swayam Vipo Kurvanti Tirtani Tirti Kurvanti Tirtani Svantaste Nagada Prata Svantaste Nagada Prata Bhavad Pita Bhagavatas Bhavad Pita Bhagavatas Tirta Bhuta Swayam Vibho Tirta Bhuta Swayam Vibho Tirti Kurvanti Tirtani Tirti Kurvanti Tirtani Svātaste nāgadā prata Svātaste nāgadā prata Bhagavad-vidā bhagavatā Bhagavad-vidā bhagavatā Sita bhūtā svayam vibhū Sita bhūtā svayam vibhū Iti kurvanti tirtāni Iti kurvanti tirtāni Svātaste nāgadā prata Svātaste nāgadā prata Bhavadvita Bhagavatas Sita Bhuta Swayam Vibho Sita Bhuta Swayam Vibho Iti Gurvanti Tirtani Iti Gurvanti Tirtani Svatasthena Gata Prata Svatasthena Gata Prata Bhavadvita Bhagavatas Bhavadvita Bhagavatas Sita Bhuta Swayam Vibho Sita Bhuta Swayam Vibho Tirtani, Tirti Kurvanti Tirtani, Svatastena Gada Bhatta, Svatastena Gada Bhatta, Bhavakvita Bhagavata, Bhavakvita Bhagavata, Tita Puta Swayam Vibho, Tita Puta Swayam Vibho, Tirti Kurvanti Tirtani, Tirti Kurvanti Tirtani, Vaishnavis Bhavadvita Bhagavatas Bhavadvita Bhagavatas Tita Bhuta Swayam Vibho Tita Bhuta Swayam Vibho Kirti Kurvanti Kirtitani Kirti Kurvanti Kirtitani 
Translation My Lord, devotees like your good self are very really holy places personified. Because you carry the personality of Godhead within your heart, you turn all places into places of pilgrimage. The personality of Godhead is omnipresent by his diverse potencies everywhere, just as the power of electricity is distributed everywhere within space. Similarly, the, Lord, the Lord's omnipresence is perceived and manifested by his unalloyed devotees like Vidura, just as electricity is manifested in an electric bulb. A pure devotee like Vidura always feels the presence of the Lord everywhere. He sees everything in the potency of the Lord and the Lord in everything. The holy places all over the earth are meant for purifying the polluted consciousness of human beings by an atmosphere surcharged with the presence of the Lord's unalloyed devotees. If one visits a holy place, he must search out the pure devotee residing in such holy places, take lessons from them, try to apply such instructions in practical life, thus gradually prepare oneself for the ultimate salvation going back to Godhead. To go some holy places of pilgrimage does not mean to does not mean only to take part in the Ganges or Yamuna or to visit the temples situated in those places. One should also find representatives of Vidura who have no desire in life save and accept to serve the personality of Godhead. The personality of Godhead is always in with such pure devotees because of their unalloyed service which is without any tinge of fruitive action or utopian speculation. They are in the actual service of the Lord, specifically by the process of hearing and chanting. The pure devotee hear from the authorities and chant, sing and write of the glories of the Lord. Mahamuni Vyasadeva heard from Narada and then he chanted in writing. Sukadev Goswami studied from his father and he described it to Parikshit. That is the way of Srimad Bhagavatam. So by their action by their actions the pure devotees of the Lord can render any place into a place of pilgrimage, and the holy places are worth the name only on their account. Such pure devotees are able to rectify the polluted atmosphere of any place, and what to speak of a holy place rendered unholy by the questionable actions of interested persons who try to adopt a professional life at the cost of reputation of a holy place. Om Jnana Timurandasya Kyananjana Shalakaya Chakshur Militamina Asmai Shri Guru Venamaha Vancha Kampata Rubyascha Kripa Sindhu Gayevacha Patitanam Pavanevyo Vaishnavidyo Namo Namaha 
Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadha Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So this is a very well-known verse. It's spoken by Maharaj Yudhisthira and he is addressing his uncle Vidura. Vidura had gone away. Well, actually he had been sent away by Duryodhan. Duryodhan, the eldest son of Dhritarashtra, became very angry at Vidura because Vidura was telling Dhritarashtra not to listen to Duryodhan. Don't take advice from your son Duryodhan, he's not a good person. And so <laughs> Duryodhan became angry at Vidura and sent him out, you get out from here before, you, before I beat you out. <laughs> so Vidura had to leave and he was happy to leave. He saw that as the grace of Lord Krishna. He saw Maya working in two ways. In one way, he was being sent out from his comfortable place at home, in the palace, in Hastinapur, where his needs were well taken care of and he was provided for. But he was being sent out and he thought that that was also the special grace of Krishna, Krishna's Maya, that it allowed him to go out, to go to visit holy places and to go and get association from the devotees who live in the holy places. Actually, Vidura is Yamaraj. Lord Yamaraj had been cursed by a great yogi named Manduka Muni. It happened that Manduka Muni was residing in a cave. He was a genuine yogi and he was away from the world residing alone in a cave. But it happened the particular cave in which he was residing, at one point a gang of dacoits, a gang of thieves and robbers came and they hit, tried to hide in the same cave where Manduka Muni was hiding. And it happened that the king's, the king's army, the king's police force, they came and they looked for these people and they arrested all this gang. And when they arrested this gang, at that time they also arrested Mandu Kamuni. So they thought Mandu Kamuni was with them. They didn't know that he was just a yogi who was just doing his meditation. And they thought he must be one of the gang. So Mandu Kamuni also got arrested and he went to court with all the, all the gang. And the whole gang was sentenced to death. And Manduka Muni was also supposed to die. And at one point Manduka Muni, they were just about to put, put him on top of a bunch of spears which would go through his body and kill him. And just at that point, the king found out that a great mistake has been made and that this person is actually a genuine yogi. So the king immediately rushed there and he fell at the feet of Manduka Muni and he begged Manduka Muni to forgive him. So Manduka Muni for forgave the king, but he wanted to understand, why did this happen to me? What did I do? What was my karma that this had to happen to me? You know, bad things, when things happen to us, there must be some reason why they happen to us. And they ha you can, if you go to our past, if we look at our past, we can find out usually what was the problem. So Manduka Muni, he accepted the apologies of the king 
And then he went to see Lord Yamaraj, who was the god of death. And your Lord Yam Yamaraj, one of his functions is to punish sinful people for their sins, right? According to the sins which we do, we will get punished. You can, we can escape from the government. We can escape from the police. But we cannot escape from Lord Yamaraj. He has his agents everywhere. And they're watching and they're noting. Yamaraj also has his secretary, Chitragupta, who's keeping all the notes on his hard, hard disk, you know. He must have a big computer system for all the living entities. And he knows about each and every one. So Manduka Muni went to Yamaraj and asked Lord Yamaraj, what did I do to deserve this? Why was it I was going to be given the death sentence? And Lord Yamaraj checked, he opened his hard drive <laughs> and he checked up and Manduka Muni and he saw that, that when he was a young boy, when you were a young boy, you used to take a blade of grass and you would pierce insects with it. So because you were piercing insects, you were to get you were going to be pierced yourself. The reaction for your sin. So Manduka Muni thought this is unjust. I was only a young boy. I should not be punished like that. And so he cursed Yamaraj, that, that you're, you do like that to me, I curse you. And he cursed Yamaraj that he would take birth in this, as the son of a Sudra lady, and the son of a low-class woman, uncultured woman. So Yamaraj accepted that curse and it happened that he took birth in the palace of Hastinapur, but in the womb of a, one of the servants there in the palace. Not one of the princesses or queens, but in the womb of one of the servant ladies. And Vidura was actually the son, the seaman, by the seaman of Vyasadeva. So the seaman of Vyasadeva conceived this child in the womb of a maidservant woman and in this way Yamaraj was born as Vidura and as Vidura he lived in the palace and he was like uncle they were like an uncle to the Pandavas and to the sons of Dhritarashtra indeed Dhritarashtra and Maharaj Pandu they were like his brothers because they were all all three were conceived by the semen of Vyasadeva, but in different wombs. And Vidura, because he was born in the womb of this, this, the maidservant, he didn't get quite the same facilities as Dhritarashtra and Pandu. They were, in the, they were conceived in the womb of a royal woman, a woman in the queenly order. So anyway, Vidura appears there and he was driven out from the palace and when he was driven out from the palace by Duryodhan he went to visit all the holy places. He went to visit all the holy places and for he did it not just for like a few weeks or a month but he went for some, many years he was traveling visiting holy places and he was able to get association. If you read the Srimad Bhagavatam, you can read how Vidura got association from Udav and then he went on to meet Maitreya and he got very important instructions from Maitreya. This is that's described in the third and the fourth canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. You can hear about Vidura and how he met with these different people and he got instructions. 
So he was traveling to all these different places for a long time. He was happy. He got out from... First of all, he was happy to get out of his job, Yamaraj. It's not a very pleasant job. <laughs> you know, you have to punish all the sinful... You don't get good association there. Sometimes people complain. They have no association. Their job is working with people who are not devotees. So it's very difficult to keep our Krishna consciousness when we don't have the association of devotees. Very important is to get association with devotees. Sometimes people come, they want to be initiated into Krishna consciousness, but they don't want to associate with the devotees. So how can they be, how can they progress in Krishna consciousness? Sometimes people no, I'm doing everything on my own. So why do you need a teacher then, if you do everything on your own? You don't need initiation. Go ahead, keep doing it. <laughs> So sometimes people, they, they want initiation, but they don't want to follow the process. And part of the process is to take, initi take uh, association with devotees. In fact, association is very important for all of us. It's very important that we should take association with devotees who are at least are equal and if we can get association with devotees who are even more experienced than us then it is even more valuable. Sometimes if we just associate with juniors all the time it's not very good because juniors will always do whatever you tell them but when you associate with people who are your peers in other words they're equals are people who are your seniors, then they will tell you what, you know, they may say, hey, you know, why are you doing like that? That is not right. You shouldn't, yeah. They will point out things to us which may not be so immediately clear to us. So it's very important to get association and to get the association of the senior devotees. Just like when His Holiness Jayapataka Swami Maharaj comes here, or Banu Swami comes, then many people come. They want to be here and to have that association because they know the value just being with, in the presence of the devotees, the very senior devotees. It's very beneficial for our Krishna consciousness. So similarly, Vidura came back to Hastinapur to meet with about, he came back to Hastinapur to meet Maharaj Yudhisthira, but his real purpose in coming back was to deliver his brother, Dhritarashtra. He has come back. Not, he's not come back just to see the family, just to be with everyone again, but he has a real purpose in coming back. And his purpose was to deliver to deliver his brother, Dhritarashtra, because he knew Dhritarashtra was in old age, he was near to death, and he wanted that before he left the body, he should do something about his spiritual condition. The Vedic culture requires like that, that life is divided into ashram, there is the brahmachari life, meaning young boys, young men. They go to college, they study, they go to school, they get education. Brahmachari life it means actually to live in the home of the guru and to get training from them. Then after brahmacharya life, then there is grihastha life. Grihastha life means having a family to have children and to practice Krishna consciousness in the home. At the same time, accept responsibility 
for a wife and for children. That is mor moral, that is a part of the Ashram Vedic culture, that going into the family life, one takes more responsibility. And at the same time, one should continue to progress, chanting Hare Krishna and associating with devotees. But family life comes gradually to an end. In other words, at some point the children grow up, the children get married, they go off, they have their own families and so on. And the parents are then, you know, they're expected to retire. And after Grihastha life, then there is the Vanaprastha order. Vanaprastha means retired life. Retired from material duties, but not retired from spiritual duties. So in the retired stage, Vanaprastha, one is expected to go and visit holy places, just like Vidura. He'd gone off to visit holy places, and he traveled to holy places for many years, and he met with great saintly persons. And after meeting all of these people, he came back to deliver his brother. So Vanaprastha life, what Vanaprastha is, you may go to visit holy places or you may simply stay at home. You can stay at home and worship the deity. You have the deity in your home and you worship the deity and you study scriptures and you can invite people to your home or you can go to other people's homes. You go to different places and do some preaching. Just like many devotees are doing Bhakti Briksha preaching. We have different groups here in Penang. There are many different devotees preaching. Last night I went to Ishan Goranga Prabhu and he had a, a big crowd of people also. And uh, he was telling me how there are actually three groups. And they're in different parts of Penang and they meet regularly and they have programs. So like that, Bhakti Briksha. I mean, it can be in a home, it can be, it can be in the park if you want. You can have meetings any place, wherever you can find a suitable place to be with people. You sit with them and you chant the Maha Mantra and you read some scripture and discuss the teachings of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. This is Krishna consciousness. That is, a, this is our program to teach people about Krishna and to give people association. So Vanaprastas are meant to do like that. They don't have to leave the wife, they don't have to leave the home, but they're meant to do more spiritual activities. You know, they're, they're, because but as we get older, we have to prepare for the next life. Right? This. It's not that at the time of death everything is finished, but rather the, when, with death there's a change of body. You give up one body and take another body. So how we live in this life, it will determine the type of body we will take in our next life. We are preparing the seeds for our future birth by the activities which we are doing now in this life. So Vidura took that opportunity to go and visit holy places and to associate with saintly people. It's very important when we go to a holy place that we don't simply go there only to take a bath. Some people think that going to the holy place, oh, you just go there and you put some money, donation in the box, and you offer obeisances, and you see the deities, and you get some prasadam, and take bath in the holy place, and you come back again, then you do all nonsense. <laughs> right? Come back and continue our sinful life. 
that is not how the mood in which we should have in going to the holy place. But many people do that, unfortunately. And Mother Ganga was reluctant to come to this planet because she said that if I come to this planet, all the sinful people will come and bathe in my water and I will have to carry all of their sinful reactions. However, Maharaj Bhagirat, who was trying to bring Ganga down to this planet, he told Mother Ganga that, well, if you come to this planet, yes, sinful people will bathe in your water, but saintly people, they will also bathe in your water and they will neutralize all the sins of the sinners. And they will bless your waters because the saints will come and bathe in that water. The great yogis, the great sages who live in, in the mountains, in the Himalayas and so on, they will bathe in your water and they will give you great blessings. So going to the holy place it's not just to take the bath, but the real purpose in going to a holy place is to associate with great devotees who may live there, to find out the saintly devotees and to hear from them and to get instructions from them. That is the real purpose in going to holy place to get that association. Just like Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he was living in Mayapur, and then one day he told his mother, I will go to Gaya and do Shraddha for our father. My father, Jagannath Mishra, had departed from the world. So, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he told his Sachimata, I will go to Gaya and we will, I will do Shraddha ceremony for our, my father Jagannath. So Sachimata agreed. But when Lord Chaitanya went to Gaya, he met with Ishwara Puri and he took initiation from Ishwara Puri. Ishwara Puri gave him the initiation and initiated him into the chanting of the holy names. And in this way Chaitanya Mahaprabhu began his Krishna Consciousness activities. Previously, he'd been a, a logician and he'd been a teacher of logic, but after taking initiation from Ishvara Puri, then he awakened his loving relationship with Krishna and he became very active in the Sankirtan movement. So that's one example, going to the holy place that you get initiation from a saintly person who lives there. Going to the holy place, the real, we, we don't just go to see. People think, oh, I'll go and see the holy place. It's not just the eye exercise. You don't just go to see, but you go to hear. We have to use the ears to hear. That is the real purpose in going to the holy place. Srinvaktam Swakata Krishna Punya Shravana Kirtana Ridi Antastohi Abhadrani Vidunoti Suratsatam By hearing the topics of Lord Krishna, that is in itself a pious activity. Simply by hearing about Krishna. You know, some people want to do some pious activities and they do things like put the fish back in the sea <laughs> or let the birds go free instead of killing them. Put the fish back in the sea or let the birds go free. And this is uh, what people think is a pious activity. But the, the most pious activity you can do is to hear the topics of Krishna. Hearing the topics of Lord Krishna is the most pious because it cleanses the desire for material enjoyment, 
from the heart. And that is the greatest benefit we can get. Pious activities may take away some of the sinful reactions which we have, but they don't take away the desire for more sin. We continue to commit sins. But if we hear topics of Krishna from the devotees, then the effect of that hearing is that we will no longer want to com commit sinful activities. So that is the most important thing. So hearing from the devotees is very powerful. So Maharaj Yudhisthira, he's glorifying Vidura, he said, you are the personification of the holy places. Maharaj Yudhisthira had come to visit them and he said, You are Tirta Bhuta Swayam Vibhu. You yourself, you, are, you personify the holy places. And Prabhupada in the purport points out, it's the devotees that make a place holy. It's not the place itself which is holy. It's the, because the devotees are there that the place becomes holy. Just like here in Gilogor, this has become a holy place. Because here in this place, there is always chanting of the holy names of the Lord, and there is the worship of the Lord, and there are the discussions from the scriptures regularly. So this place has become a holy place. It's become a tirtha. That just by coming here, people benefit spiritually. They're able to hear the glories of the Lord. So Maharaj Yudhisthira is so much appreciating Vidura that you have come. You've come to purify us. You personify the holy places. Because Vidura has come, now he's going to enlighten them. Right? People come. They don't just come to only eat prasadam, but they come to speak the glories of the Lord. And they come to speak about the need to give up material attachment. Just like Vidura, he's come to preach to Dhritarashtra and his preaching to Dhritarashtra, it's not flattery. He's not come to flatter Dhritarashtra. He's not just, he's not come to sympathize for Dhritarashtra. You have to understand at this point, Dhritarashtra was living with his wife Gandhari and their 100 sons had all been killed. They had all been killed by Bhima. And they're living in the home where Bhima is living. And they're eating the food which are the remnants of Bhima. So Vidura is pointing out to Dhritarashtra. He's telling Dhritarashtra, from birth you were blind. Dhritarashtra was born blind. So he could not become the king because he was blind. So he was blind materially and he was also blind spiritually. And Vidura goes on to explain to Dhritarashtra that now you're old and not only are you blind but your hearing has become weak and your power of digestion is also gone and you're, you're if afflicted by all the symptoms of old age and it means the approach of death. So Vidura is speaking to Dhritarashtra and he's telling Dhritarashtra that you have to do something. You have to get out of this condition. It's, it told before you leave the body, you want to do something. Take a step <coughs> forward and try to make some use of the human form of life. Having the human body 
is a special blessing for all of us. But if we don't use it for self-realization, then we are very foolish and we have wasted a great opportunity. Actually, in Bhagavad Gita, we are described as being miserly. Misers, you know misers, they have money, they just count it. They just smell it. They like the look of it. They don't spend it. Right? Maybe they're not married. <laughs> if they had a wife, she would take it. <laughs> anyway, miserly people. They, but we are all misers. If we have the human life and we don't use it for the real purpose, which is to become self-realized, to understand more our spiritual identity and to prepare for a better life in the future. Now you have the human body. Where are you going to take your next birth? So Vidura is questioning to Dhritarashtra, you have to do something. What are you going to do? You've, you've, you've done nothing. You're simply living in the home of your enemy, eating the remnants of their food. This is shameful on him. And Prabhupada comments, he said, 5,000 years ago there was only one Dhritarashtra. But today you'll find a Dhritarashtra in every home. Everywhere there's Dhritarashtras. They're so, all sitting and they read the newspaper and they watch television and they don't do anything for their spiritual improvement. They're simply miserly. Although they have the human body, and the human body is endowed with senses which can be used for the service of the Lord, we don't want to do it. And so that is a, that is a miserly person. That they have the human form of life, and they don't want to take advantage of it. So Dhritarashtra is condemned by Vidura. And Vidura is so powerful, his words are so powerful, he's cutting into the heart of Dhritarashtra. Actually, that is the business of the sadhu, the holy person. They're not meant to flatter. They're not interested just to get some bakshis or whatever, do you know, dan or whatever. They want, they want to give some real benefit to the people. And sometimes it will be painful to us, but that pain is to cure us. Just like if you have an infection and you go to the doctor and he said, oh, I'll have to lance it, I'll have to cut it. And you go, oh, oh, oh no, please, don't cut me. A doctor said, no, no, I have to cut it. If I don't cut it, the infection will spread. It can go to your heart, can kill you, you know, you have to... And patient, no, no, please, doctor, please, just put, put the fan on it or blow some cold air on it to take away the heat. We don't want the pain of the knife to cut. But doctors say, no, I have to cut, you have to do it. Oh. <laughs> so it's like that, material life. The sadhu comes, he says, you have to stop this. You have to give up this. You have to get out from here. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> very difficult, very painful. But if we don't do, if we don't take the advice of the sadhus, we'll simply remain fallen in the material world. And you don't know where your next birth will be. And Prabhupada said, the man may have a big factory, next life he may become a rat in the factory. <laughs> and then the other person has a big dog, next life he becomes a dog. So we have to be very careful. Where are we going 
in our future life. Where do you want to go? What do you want to do? Of course, the woman becomes attached to a man. Oh, next life you become a man. Man becomes attached to a woman, you become a woman. Is that very good? Not so good. We want to be very careful. Now we have this human life. We have to make proper use of it to get out from all of this bodily condition of life. We have to make some effort. Even we cannot achieve perfection, we have to try. We have to do something. And of course it's, it's a little difficult, it's a little painful, but you have to do it. You have to be determined that this is, I have to do this. Just like we tell people, don't eat meat. Oh, <laughs> some people, they cannot give up meat. They cannot give up their cup of tea. Tell them, don't drink. What? What's wrong with a cup of tea? You know, the problem is you love your, you love your tea. You don't love Krishna. You love tea more than you love Krishna. You become attached to these things. We become absorbed in the mundane world, the material world. Sit and watch television, one movie after another movie. The Tamil movies, the Bollywood movies. Yeah, we are all laughing. I know you all watch. <laughs> You rascals. <laughs> you have to realize these things are not, they're not real, you know. It's all just a drama, just to take you away from Krishna. There are so many distractions in this material world. Maya is very expert in taking us away from our real business here. Maya has come just to bewilder us and she comes in so many different forms as, you know, different movies and mobile phones, so many innovations. Oh, so wonderful. Yes, it, it's so wonderful that we forget Krishna more and more. We become more and more covered, more and more in illusion. We have to be very careful, we have to be on guard. And we have to pray that one day Vidura will come to me and yell at me and tell me my maya, get me out of my illusion. So actually our Krishna consciousness movement is for that. We, want, we need many Viduras, representatives of Vidura to go door to door and preach to people and de deliver them and bring them out of their maya, get them out of their illusion and help them to understand the temporary nature of this world and how we have to really prepare ourselves to get out. All right, are there any questions? Yes, Prabhu. Thank you very much, Maharaj. Uh, we have been hearing so many instructions from the, we have all the instructions from Silla Prabhupada and also from all the Gurus. Uh, after listening to these instructions for many years and many senior devotees are involving in speculative business, speculative business. So isn't it gambling? Yes, if they're speculating, then certainly it's gambling. <clears throat> Somebody may have been around Krishna consciousness a long time and you say they've been hearing from senior devotees, but maybe they're not hearing very carefully. Because if they were hearing carefully, they would not speculate. We should simply repeat what are the words of our acharyas. We should only speak what is in Prabhupada's books and what is given by our acharyas. We don't just simply speak anything which comes in our mind. 
but we speak according to the teachings. We should associate to discuss topic about Krishna, but a very big group associate to gamble. And the latest development we observe, devotees starting rearing pets, dogs, uh, fish, and uh, where do they, they get time for all these murders? <laughs> like me, I'm a retired from my service and now I, I hardly have time. <laughs> when they, they can keep fish, many, many tanks of fish and dogs, some have few dogs. So all these senior devotees. So this one is a bit painful for devotees like me. And uh, where do they get time for this? That's <laughs> <laughs> Thank you much. Yes, we have to agree that these are not bona fide activities for our devotees. We don't keep pets usually, of course. We're not against animals, but as you say, we don't have time to do all of these things. There's so many more important things to be done. So keeping pets is <laughs> it's not the business of devotees. One time, even Lord Chaitanya, when he was a young boy, he got some puppy dogs. But Mother said she took them away and said, you're a Brahmana boy, you're not supposed to have these things. Yeah, yeah. Took them away. We can give mercy to these animals. We don't mind giving them prasadam. Just like dogs, all right, we can give dog prasadam. But we don't keep them in the house. You don't keep dogs in, around the home. If they're outside, you can give them some prasadam. That's all right. We don't mind. And some fish, I don't know. Put them back in the sea. Harikshan <laughs> Maharaj, just now I was explaining about the Manduka Muni, how he was being uh, curse because of his activity. But from that, uh, what I can see that even though he was uh, a Muni who had done a lot of austerity and uh, many, many activity and spiritual advancement, and still he was uh, bound for that uh, particular act action that he had done. And my question here is, uh, we have sometimes practiced Krishna consciousness many time, many years or many long time. But still, uh, uh, our actions sometimes can create a lot of uh, uh, obstacles in our life. So how actually we, we should live that so that uh, we, so many of us doesn't realize that uh, uh, whatever activity we do throughout this uh, period will eff affect in our spiritual advancement. So how we can supposed to safeguard on that part? Well, we have to understand first of all, Manduka Muni was not a devotee as such. Although he was a yogi, he was engaged in mystic yoga practice, he was not engaged in devotional service. And so therefore he had somehow, and still some sinful reactions were there, which came upon him. Because he'd never actually he'd done any real devotional service. It's the power of bhakti that it destroys past reactions. Karmani nirjatu kintu cha bhakti bhajam govindam adipursam tamaham bhajam. Lord Brahma says, bhakti burns up to the roots all fruit of activities of those who are imbued with devotion. So bhakti takes away the karma by devotional service. So if we are engaged wholeheartedly in devotional service, then whatever things we have done in the past, they can all be destroyed by the power of our devotion. Devotional service is like a blazing fire and it burns up all the results, all of our past sins. Just like a fire burns up everything. Hmm? And devotional service is so powerful, not only burns up the 
that what's above the ground, but it burns out the roots as, as well. Even the roots are removed by devotional sense. But Manduka Muni was simply engaged in some mystic yoga. So he didn't have the benefit of bhakti yoga. That's why he cursed. A devotee would never curse someone. Yeah? Especially Lord Yamaraj. <laughs> Lord Yamaraj is one of the Mahajans. He's a great devotee. You know? So if he was actually a devotee, when he met Mand Yamaraj, Mandoka Muni should have been happy to get the association of Lord Yamaraj. But instead he cursed him. But Srila Prabhupada did write a letter in that regard and he said to all the GBC, he said, in the same way you have to be very careful, you do not get cursed. <laughs> it's, if whatever decisions you make in running our society, he said, you have to be sure that you, you make proper decisions, they should be fair and just, otherwise you will be cursed, like, man, like Yamara. My question actually uh, regarding that, like what Prabhu was saying, senior devotees are doing activities which is impediment to their Krishna consciousness. What that, how that we should uh, avoid so that uh, uh, we, even though we are practicing Krishna consciousness, like Maharaj explained, uh, our sins are been uh, cleared, Bhakti Yoga take us to higher platform, but yet still devotees are yeah, arguing each other, they are, you know, have a different even though they have a different opinion, but they have been becoming more ruthless than the others, <laughs> outside people. So, how we should avoid that situation? Well, you keep saying senior devotees, but senior devotees won't do these things, you see. <laughs> there are different kinds of senior devotees. Somebody may be senior by age. You know, he's been a, he's, a, it's a, he's in a body, an old, old age body, he's senior in age. Somebody else is senior maybe by initiation, that they've been in the movement a long time. They've been initiated a long time, so they're senior. And someone else may be senior by managerial position. He's taking on some responsibilities, so in that sense he's senior. Someone else may be senior by realization. And so there, there are different ways in which someone is considered senior. Of course, we offer our respects to all devotees. But you can understand what is a person's consciousness by their activities. And now if somebody is more inclined to keep fish and dogs and things, you can understand, you know, he's not too serious about Krishna consciousness. And so we offer our respect to him because he's chanting the holy name and he's been around a long time. And so we mentally honor a devotee who chants the holy name, right? Nectar of instruction describes, we mentally honor a devotee who chants the holy name. We offer our obeisances to a devotee who has undergone initiation and who is engaged in worshipping the deity. Now somebody is worshipping fish and dogs, you know, it's different from worshipping the deity, obviously. Somebody is worshipping the deity, they, they have to be a Brahmin, they have to be twice initiated, they have to be Brahminically qualified. And somebody, and then Nectar of Instruction says, we should associate with and faithfully serve a devotee who is fixed in undeviating devotional service and is freed from the propensity to criticize others. And so, like that, a devotee fixed in undeviating devotional service, hearing, chanting, remembering, these different angas of bhakti. He's fully engaged in that. And he doesn't spend his time criticizing other people. That, we see that devotee, he's the most senior. Mm -hmm. Last questions? Anyone from the... Hare Krishna Maharaj. 
Uh, we are understand our understanding is so many uh, devotees uh, they are promoting their own gurus like uh, promoting initiation or whatever so is it advisable to promote their own guru to the new new pipe devotees thank you Maharaj. yes well we have it, it's difficult to put a lot you know to, to draw the line, where do you draw the line on this? Because on one hand, you don't want to discourage Guru Bhakti. People have a lot of devotion for their spiritual teacher. So you don't want to discourage their devotion for their teacher. But at the same time, we do have the ISKCON Disciple Course, and before initiation, everyone is supposed to attend the ISKCON Disciple Course. Now, in the ISKCON Disciple Course, it's very clearly pointed out that it's every individual's own responsibility to choose for themselves who they want and when they want to take initiation from. Who they want to take from and when they want to take the initiation. Everyone has their own choice to make. It, it's every individual's own choice. Of course, sometimes there is peer pressure, you know, you, know, you should take, you know, this, we're all initiated, you should also be initiated, you should be in the group, you know, you should be one of the group. So, it, it happens. But we also should point out that even if you are all initiated like that, we're, a me we're all members of ISKCON, yes. one family. And we are all the family of Srila Prabhupada. It's Srila Prabhupada who is the founder, Acharya. Now there are certain rules sometimes we, we see, there are certain rules, some things are not followed properly. One of the things is like, you know, they put the picture on the altar. It shouldn't actually go on the altar. You know, the picture of our guru is on the altar. And that's not supposed to be done. According to the ISKCON Disciple Course, you keep that picture, we keep our Guru's picture on a table at the side of the altar. You see? That's a small thing. I, mean, I can understand because everybody who's doing the puja, they don't want to be taking the picture on and off all the time. But actually you're not supposed to put it on the altar. You're supposed to keep it at the side of the altar on the table where the paraphernalia goes. And that's how they do it in Mayapur. That's how they do it in a standard ISKCON temple. That's how it's supposed to be done. It's not always followed, but it's supposed to be. It's in the ISKCON Disciple Course. It's also pointed out in the ISKCON Disciple Course that the purpose of initiation is to bring us closer to Prabhupada, to become closer to the founder Acharya. And, and our Acharya is here on the line of disciplic succession. That's the real purpose of initiation. It, it's not just only my guru, but initiation means now you're a member of ISKCON. The initiation brings us into ISKCON. It doesn't just connect you just to your guru, but it brings you into the ISKCON society. And we have a we're all part of the one society. And that is what initiation is, as it's done nowadays. It's meant to be like that. And we, we give respect to all the spiritual teachers. Just like when we have Vyasa Puja, we're supposed to do the biggest Vyasa Puja for Prabhupada. Right? Yes. Prabhupada's Vyasa Puja is supposed to be much bigger than anybody else's Vyasa. We celebrate other Guru's Vyasa Puja, but we keep it basic. But Prabhupada's Vyasa Puja, we like to do it very grand, very special. And everyone expected to take part. Everyone's expected to write offerings 
for the Vyasa Puja of Prabhupada. You may write for other gurus, you may not. It's up to you. But everyone is expected to write an offering for Srila Prabhupada. So the central person in our society is Srila Prabhupada. Prabhupada is the Shiksha Guru for all the devotees. Now somebody is initiated by that person and somebody else is initiated by other people. Different gurus are there. But we're all under Prabhupada. The teachings are all in Prabhupada's book. <laughs> Not my guru's book. Yeah. But Prabhupada's book. We read Prabhupada's book. We're members of Prabhupada's society and we're following Prabhupada's instructions. So the initiation is to connect us to Prabhupada. And if you forget Prabhupada and just simply think my guru, then something is wrong. And so we do try to encourage the devotees, keep Prabhupada in the center. And because we didn't have that, that's why we got things right like the Ritvik movement. And the Ritvik movement, it did, it did deplete, it weakened our society. These people, they claim that we have taken Prabhupada's movement for ourselves. But we want to show them that no, this is Prabhupada's movement. And Prabhupada is still very much with, in the center of our movement. And we're not trying to take Prabhupada out of the movement. Uh, sorry Prabhu, the time's up Prabhu, so we will let you later talk with Maharaj. <coughs> Hare Krishna, so we would like to uh, thank uh, His Holiness Bhakti Vikna Vinas and Arashima Maharaj for delivering a very nice uh, Bhagavatam today. So uh, everybody please uh, say a big Hari Bol for Maharaj. So Hari Bol. Thank you very much Maharaj. So uh, to uh, end the program, so what we will do, uh, Maharaj will distribute some uh, Mahaprasadam that we have here. And uh, please remember, so uh, we are all obliged, so when we hear uh, Bhagavadam or when we 